Hi, and welcome to a four axis indexing demonstration. First thing we're going to look at is the world coordinate system represented in red. We're going to take that coordinate system and put it in the center of indexing, which will be the middle of the block. And I'm going to use some lines to help me with snapping. So I'm going to go to blank. I'm going to hide all surfaces. That just makes it easier for me to construct lines. Then I'm going to go to geometry, line at two points. Snap to the middle of this arc, to the bottom arc, the back side of our part, this line, to this line. Now we can move our coordinate system. We're going to do that by going to view, world UCS on three points. We'll snap to the middle of the part. Then the x-axis direction is going to be here and the y-axis will be over here. Now our coordinate system is where we want. I'm going to unblank all of our surfaces. Now we're going to create our path curves and add machining. I'm going to do this manually so you can compare it to feature recognition and tool-based machining. So we go to the curves tab face curve and select the bottom of our pocket. You can see the blue outline. Next we go to automation and create a pocket work step. Here you have your tool number, diameter, feeds and speeds and step over. That was set by default. If you were to use tool based machining, no matter what tool you grabbed, it would set those preferences for you. Otherwise, the feeds and speed would have to be off the top of your head or you'd have to go to advance and calculate. The depth we don't know at this time. A Z step is just incrementing down to the bottom of the pocket. We'll use a stock allowance of zero. We'll just cut the size with the pocket. Step over of 50% just ensures consistency based on the tools you grab. We're going to choose high speed machining and hit OK. Now we need to know from center to the top of our part where the pocket starts. So I'm going to go into the work step, go to advance, and our Z surface is the top of the pocket. So I'm going to click on the top of the part. That value gets copied to the clipboard and I'm just going to hit paste. Now that I have the surface, I can automatically calculate the depth because the curve is at the bottom of the pocket. We'll verify our machining, a 3D preview, and next we'll cut the profile around on the right hand side of the part where there's a lot of stock. We go back to the curve tab and create a new curve. We're going to use arc move and walk our way around the outside profile. Now that wasn't a bad process, but if you had a lot of geometry, that could really slow you down. Then we go to automation, contour. Because there's a lot of material, we're going to take multiple passes walking into the wall. Our tool number, we're going to change that to tool two. We're going to use a different diameter. The comp number is the registry value at your machine where the diameter or radius is stored. Feeds and speeds, again, tool-based machining would populate that. Uh, the depth of cut, we don't know that value at this time. Uh, Z step, again, incrementing. A finish allowance, total stock. I'm going to say there's an inch and a quarter of material. And with a quarter inch tool, let's go with 50%, 1.125. Offset direction left for climb milling. Let's add an automatic lead in and lead out. You can set the values under advance. And we'll take a, before we can preview, let's go back into the profile, go to advance. Our surface stays the same, but our depth is going to change. So we need to know the full depth of the part. So we're gonna to go to dimensions, check distance, top to bottom. That value gets copied and paste. Close and verify. It's 
So that was a manual example. Now we'll go on to feature recognition and tool-based machining. We'll go ahead and we're going to delete the curves and work steps we created earlier. Now we'll go to the Easy Wizards and choose Feature Recognition. It created all of our path curves, blue for our facing paths, we could skim the top. We have red for our two pockets and yellow for an outside or inside contour. And in this case, it's outside. So let's begin. I'm going to double click on the yellow path curve. It knows the start height and the depth, unlike the manual work steps. Contour. We'll use a quarter inch end mill. The Z data, it knows the depth of cut and everything, so we hit update work steps. Hit OK and verify. Now it's using the lead in and lead out that I prefer. Those were set in a template for the tool based machining. Now I don't want to cut the entire perimeter, so I'm just going to go and make that my active curve. Go to the curves tab, delete from and to. I want to delete from here. Now you can see the arrow going right to left. So I'm going to delete from here around the part up until this point here. Now we'll take a look at the contour again. Now there's a lot of stock here, so we need to add a total stock. Cycle data, total stock, and a cut step. Now we'll do our pocket, high speed machining. We'll use a half inch tool. We'll update our work step. Now there are two types of pocketing. You have facing where the tool will take over travel the boundary. And then you have the standard pocket which keeps the tool inside the boundary. So we'll turn off facing. Hit OK and verify. Next we'll cut the other pocket. Now I don't want to cut full depth, so I'm going to go back into the operation and place in a step. Now we'll move on to hole recognition. Go to the Easy Wizards. Hole recognition. Double click our hole. We're going to use a deep hole. We're going to peck. We're going to come completely out of the work. Now up here we have our 3.15 for the diameter, the start height, and the total depth. Automatic update. Verify. I'm going to go right to rapid cut. I don't need to see the simulation. Now we're ready for indexing. Let's take a close look at our pockets and slots. You can see that they're symmetrical. So we're going to go into our pocket work step. Verification. Here are your wrapping and indexing options. We're indexing around X, making two copies, and they're 180 degrees apart. Now for our slots, our slot is 90 degrees away from our pocket. So we're going to create a new coordinate system. I'll just call it 90 degrees. We want that coordinate system directly on top of the world. So we're going to have X, Y, and Z as zero. 
and we're going to rotate it around the x-axis by 90 degrees. Select your coordinate system in the list box. Now for our slot we'll go and use feature recognition. We're going to index. Go back to the world coordinate system so we can view, get a better view of our simulation. But before we do anything, we're going to go to the work step manager. We want to be safe, so we're going to change our rapid when we index. And we want to change our tool numbers to make sure they match. So quarter inch will be tool one. Uh, finch will be tool 2, drill will be 3. Verify all, and a 3D preview. Now that the part is complete, we can post our G code. I chose a Haas with four axis. We'll look at our angle to make sure the post is outputting correctly. We have an A of 180. Let's take a look at an A of 90. And everything is in check. Well, that completes the video. I hope you enjoyed watching.